Welcome to another episode of Mita Unshackled. <laughs> the, the, the crowd. We need a fake audience <laughs> thing. We don't have an audience yet. But one day we'll have a big studio audience. We'll be like the Jimmy Kimmel show or something. Big applause sign. Maybe, maybe more like Tucker Carlson. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we are back with another episode of Media Shackled, introducing you to some of the industry leaders, some of the thought leaders in the cannabis space. And I'm pleased to be jo joined with uh, one of the in individuals who I consider one of the smartest people in Arizona cannabis. I don't know how far his reach extends outside of Arizona cannabis or his company's reach, but we're going to find out. And uh, inevitably, one day, it will extend beyond its reach. That's what I love about these things. It's like they're a little footnote in history. 15, 20, 1,000 years from now, people are going to be like, hey, you know what? Anyways. Remember when? <laughs> it, it, no, these digital archives will be yeah. around forever. You yes, know, it's, it's kind of really cool. <clears throat> so we're here with John Gibson from Treehouse Labs. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. No, we appreciate you coming in today. And uh, I, I actually, I love going up to Treehouse because you guys are such an amazing location, you know? Yeah. Right down there in Old Town Scottsdale. Um, easy access to get to. And uh, yeah, we're right there on the corner of Indian School and Fifth Ave. So. You know, people have a lot of choices as to where they can do business, but I think putting in an Old Town Scottsdale is like, oh, I'm going to go to Old Town Scottsdale. I'm going to have some lunch, mm -hmm. you know, before or after my treehouse visit. I think that's a pretty smart move. Um, but let's start with you. Let's talk, tell people who you are, where you came from, how you got into the industry. Because a lot of people watch this for educational purposes. They're like, you know, can I come into the industry? I don't, I don't know what the industry is about. And then other industry professionals are like, okay, that's my friend. I'm learning. And other, you know, it's a, it's a hodgepodge of individuals who watch this. So I do like to also always let people know how people got started in the industry because we only have like a 10 year old industry here in Arizona. Right. So where did you come from? Where I came from, well, I came from my parents, but uh, <laughs> I started with the womb. <laughs> um, after the womb, I was uh, born in, uh, in Brunswick, Maine, uh, grew up military. So we immediately moved to California. My brother was born there, moved to Virginia, moved back to California. I think there's a few songs that reference going back to Cali. Yeah. Um, so I, I, need probably draw, I probably have one I sing in my head. I need to draw a map here. Okay. Yeah, it's almost like the Indiana Jones uh, line that goes across the, the Atlantic and stuff. And then after California, down into Alabama, and was there for a long year. And then we moved to Nebraska, and uh, from junior high up, uh, I was we lived in Nebraska. I had the opportunity to uh, I won a no one I earned a scholarship athletic scholarship uh, to the University of Nebraska to play football. You played football at University of Nebraska. I did. Yeah, like yep. the Nebraska when they were the Nebraska. Now it's like just the Cornhuskers. The Cornhuskers. You played yes. for the Cornhuskers. I did. Yes. Holy I did. cow! Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, nine, uh, ninety-six to oh one uh, when we were uh, in still in our heyday winning national championships and uh, it was a great experience i earned my degree there didn't you guys play in the holiday bowl like in 98 or something we did play in the holiday bowl 98 against yeah. our arizona wildcats yep yep yeah, against they, arizona right here yeah. our guys what was that that was the running back trung kennedy was the yeah. running back there like, yeah. he hit me hard were yeah. you a linebacker no you? no way too small to be a linebacker and uh, i played a wide receiver awesome congratulations Thanks. man that's really cool that's yeah so how did you end up you left nebraska you came to arizona absolutely yeah so graduated uh in 01 and then ended up moving to arizona in 03 um just on a whim. Friends were down here. I'd visited. Uh, I mean, who doesn't love Arizona? You know, you knew they had great football programs. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Anytime I talk to anybody, I say I'm from Nebraska. The one thing they always say, remember when we beat you guys back in 96? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, like, that's like our I mean, claim to fame. I, Nebraska's a great, great program. It is a great program, you know, as far as athletic, athletics, athletes, uh, athletics, and then also, you know, uh, the graduating percentage of athletes. They were the high, at the time, they were the highest in the country. I mean, I, I, in graduation, not in, you know, actual being high. So What's weird to say is I've never been to Nebraska. Yeah. I've been to like 35 states, but I've never been to Nebraska. Uh, but so you're here in Arizona, 2001, 2003. Mm -hmm. Yep. Moved to Arizona. Um, started my uh, career in Arizona with CompUSA. Um, they were a consumer electronics uh, chain. Remember them? Yep. Competed with uh, Best Buy and Circuit City. And, you know, two of those three are no longer in existence. Um after that, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. Um, actually, I was with Pioneer Electronics right out of college. Nice. Their mobile electronics uh, division. Um, so basically, I was a product specialist, went around with the sales team, had an eight-state um, region, and just supported the sales team with product knowledge, uh, demonstrations, uh, set them up for the sale, basically. 
Very cool. Yeah. And, and then, s- oh, go ahead. Yeah. And then moved out here to CompUSA, was there with them for three years, a bunch of different management positions with, with CompUSA. And then I switched over to uh, Automotive, uh, Bridgestone Firestone. Is, uh, was with them for about 15 years, various positions. Bridgestone. I have Bridgestone. Okay, but it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get all these little squirrels. They don't matter. Right. Um, Bridgestone. So when did you start? You went from Bridgestone to Shango, right? I did, yeah. So um, I had some friends, mutual friends, um, with our f- former company was uh, – uh, um, geez, trying to blank right now. True Harvest uh, Company. Okay. Um, so I knew the owners. Uh, the, at the time I first met those guys, they were looking for some investors. So I was help bringing, uh, help them raise cap. Right. Um, then we kind of separated out for a little bit, um, and then circled like back around. Cap. Yeah. <laughs> Capital. Capital to raise. No, but that's yeah, yeah. that's good. I like that. Um, circled back around those guys. They were looking for a CEO for about a year, um, and. Kind of got hooked back up with them, went through the whole process, and then uh, you know, boom! Month later, I'm uh, I'm heading over heels in the cannabis industry. Um, been an advocate for over thirty years. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So this is you know, probably where there's a lot of really good juicy stories. Yeah, but. there's a lot of juicy stories. We can get into those too because I think the statutes of limitations ran out on a lot of that stuff. Right. I always <laughs> talk about what I did in the '90s from Tucson to Boston, but yeah. we don't need to get into that at this point. Um. So so. Uh, Maybe we should get into that in a second, but okay. let's talk yeah. about how we went to True Harvest, Shango, mm-hmm. and yep. and you were Shango for how long? Shango for almost th- uh, 30, three years. Three um, years. So yeah, it was, you know, cut my teeth in the mainstream of the industry with Shango. It's a great brand to cut your teeth with in the industry. That's a um, cultivation flower brand. Exactly. Multi-state operator in uh, seven states right now. Um, right here, we have the cultivation and the processing and, uh, and wholesale. Okay, cool. Um, and you still said we. You're getting still getting. I, 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 it's going to be a transition. We say yeah. we. And, and I still say we with Shango. You know, uh, I left on great terms. No, with, that's uh, good. That, that, with them. And then. Uh, says nice things about your former employer. I like yeah. That. Yeah. And then the CEO, Brandon, he's, uh, he told me when I left, he says, you're always family. Um, so you always that's be back. Nice. So, you know, as much as I love all these other cannabis uh, companies and get to know them better, you know, I represent Shango for life like I do Nebraska. So. Well, was, on a side note, yeah. use more Shango, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. Enough about Shango. Yeah. Um, so, but you left Shango in when? Um, so I left Shango and started with Treehouse uh, the 1st of May. 1st of May. Yeah. And h- how did you switch from uh, running a flower company to running a, a lab? I mean that's a really interesting transition. It is. It's I still trying to trying to navigate how I did that, um, but I had been you know friends and knowing the Treehouse Gang since they opened. Cool gang. A really cool gang. Yeah. Um, brilliant young minds. I work with scientists. They're all ten times smarter than me, which is great. So uh, you know I can be the one who's uh, I can be the fall guy if they need to. But anyway, um, but yeah, um, I was actually helping them at first. I'm friends with the owner Glenn. Glenn, uh, Glenn, yeah. Glenn Townsend, so friends with him, and you know, he said, "Hey, I'm going to be looking for a CEO to replace me, so I can do some other things." He's going to be doing some um, higher level uh, scouting and looking to roll up and expand into other markets. And he goes, "I need to find a CEO." And at first, I was like, "Yeah, it's not me." Where can I ask? Where did you meet Glenn? Where did I meet Glenn for this conversation? Um, no, no, like in, in life, like where was it oh, where you met Glenn? I met Glenn at Mita. Yes, there you go. Last year, <laughs> is that is that yeah. the truth? It is the absolute truth. So I met. So everybody I first, says that. I love that. Yeah, Mita is such a. So, I mean, let me go off on this real quick before no, I forget. No, no, so, I just wanted to give yeah. ourselves a shout out. There. Oh yeah, I'm gonna give you a big <laughs> shout out. I mean, Mita is a great organization in Arizona and across the U.S. Uh, you just meet so many people in the industry, especially this, the, the tight knit community here in Arizona, you know, meet is a great platform to really get out and uh, meet new people, see new products, see new brands. Appreciate that. And yeah. I love that. And I get, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people have found jobs and opportunity mm-hmm. and stuff. And we'll, st- we'll pick up right back up where we're talking, where you and Glenn met and how mm-hmm. you got there. Yeah. But I just want to point out one thing. I would like to know two things. Uh-huh. And, and it's unshackled, so I'll be honest. I want to know how many people got laid because of Mita uh-huh. and how many people got married because of Mita. You know what I'm saying? Like, Or how many people started dating because of Mita. Because, you know, people coming together is an important thing. And the best things are like like this. Like mm-hmm. this. You know, you be, move C-suite over here, C-suite over there, owner of a company here, major opportunity. That's really, really amazing. It's awesome. And it does happen, you know. Oh, yeah. Five or ten people happens to a week. 
Uh, but think about how many people end up dating people because of me. That you know, right? Oh, anyway, sure. yeah, I'm sure there's a. I'm sure we can correlate that data and get that out to the uh, the public. Yeah, we'll and then we can we can add another thing and see how many kids were the uh, product how many of Mita. Kids were, made, were <laughs> I don't think any, maybe kids were being made at Mita, and I'm not seeing. You it. never know. Um. So, but back to you. So you and Glenn started chatting at Mita. Yeah, you, actually, I met. Friends. I had met. Um, I met Abby and uh, Susanna first at Meetup. Oh, okay. And this is right before they had actually opened and got operational. So uh, I clicked with them, you know, immediately. So um, I like. I, I remember when I went to their. You guys have that. Of course, he's English, right? Yes. Or is Br- yeah, he's British. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you guys have the so many fancy machines there. So mm-hmm. it's high technology. So I got to do my whole, you have the machine that goes bing. Go. <laughs> Many machines which, that go bing. Which, yeah. is, which is that Monty Python, which like, it was <laughs> appropriate. Yeah. Oh, and, it is. Especially, you know, because I'm still learning what all these machines do. So that's kind of much how I explain it. This machine goes beep, this one goes bonk, and this one kind of steams when it's done. So basically, Glenn, you became uh, associates over mm-hmm. the year, whatever. Yeah. And then he said, why don't you come run tree houses. Yeah. Well, at first he just was asking me if, uh, Hey, I have this problem. He's presenting his problem. Hey, I need to get it. You know, I'm going to be looking for a new CEO. You know, do you know anybody? Do you have anybody? And immediately I was like, you know what, before we get into this, I'm not that person. I was like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'd been, uh, sales and operations with Bridgestone forever, but with in cannabis, my exposure was basically just operations, flower, so flower operations on the other side. So cultivation, operations. cultivation, yeah. Wholesale processing, you know, the whole gamut up to, up to, yeah. up to sale. Um, so I was like, Hey, yeah, I can help look for somebody, you know, and we know people in the industry, you know, some people that could be a good fit for them. So I would say about a month after that, you know, taking them people and really understanding what the job entailed and what the direction was of the company, what they wanted to see in a year, two years, um, some of the immediate, um, changes they wanted. Um, I was like, I think I can do this. Um, it's weird how, you know, when people make decisions in their life, they make a pros and cons list, and which I do, you know, especially with, you know, if you have a family, you got to make some decisions based on your family, the future of your family, and also the, what you can do to the company. But when it comes down to it, anytime I've made a decision where it comes down to a, a, a choice that's unknown or haven't done, I always just say, fuck it and do it. So the after the pros and cons list, the pros always weighed out, weighed the cons, but still it comes down to that fuck it moment. That's and, awesome. Um, I apologize to my wife, no, Jessica. No, no, she told me not it's unshackled. to. Yeah, it was, when we were at Mita that one time, she said, oh, that was great. Except you said the F word way too many times. So I tried to, sh- only two this time, I told her. So No, um, it, it, it's, all, it's all good. But, uh, but yeah, it was like, all right, oh, let's we, do this. We lost, we lost it. Oh, up here. Oh, there we go. And uh, so, yeah, that, I made that decision. Um, I, you know, interviewed with, had three or four interviews. And uh, this, they they made the offer. We came to a conclu- a decision to, together, and and here I am. Um, and one of the biggest things about you know labs in, in Arizona, and I think probably nationwide, although I really would know mm-hmm. uh, in other states, but it's it's, it's relationship based. Some of which are the businesses, mm-hmm. and you have a lot of relationships in the industry, so you like it's a natural fit. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of the sales and stuff, a lot of the business development you guys have to do mm-hmm. is relationship based. So I think it was very wise for Glenn to bring in somebody from the inside of the industry rather than bringing some like clown from, you know, Texas who had like a nice resume that said, mm-hmm. I've been a CEO for all these companies. Cause that, you know, they might have some skills or something that, you know, look good on the resume, but in the end, you need somebody who knows their way around Arizona. Oh, for sure. And, and that was you, right? Yeah. Um, I think there w- it started off as, I think, a five-candidate process. Oh, you had the competition? Yeah. Yeah, oh. I love competition. So he recruited you and put you up against competition? Yeah, I think there was a grooming That's process that started coach. about six months ago. You know, it started off if, you know, are you going to drink a martini or are you going to drink a Manhattan? So okay. I think that was part of it. Well, that's okay. That's yeah. And by the way, I, I chose Manhattan. <laughs> but, uh, that was an easy test. Yeah, right? But, yeah, he, they wanted somebody who, you know, obviously had the skills to, to help develop and push the team into the future, which honestly right now is a very little part of my job I have to do. These these kids, I call them kids. They're all adults. But Yeah. Well, you got uh, a little gray there. I got, a little, I got a little pepper under here. I, got, I yeah. got gray under here. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even go gray. I went straight from black, and now it's all just white, you know? Yeah. But, uh, game cap. There you go. Um, but, yeah, he definitely wanted someone who could uh, lead the team and then someone who could de- definitely build relationships. And uh, I, I'm flattered to, you know, that I've built a lot of relationships in a short period of time in this industry. It's crazy how, 
you know, being in the industry only three years, you know, it feels like, you know, 21 years, you know, it's almost like dog years. And, uh, one of my wife's concerns is just like, what do you feel like hopping jobs so soon? Because I was with a company for 15 years prior. I was like, you know, three years in this industry is like a career yeah. in this industry. Cause it, people change, try different things all the time. So, you know, this wasn't just a haphazard change for me. This was, you know, a very, uh, pro- a very long process before I made that, that, fuck it decision. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I, again, I can't express enough how impressed and happy I am with the team that we have. I, I just want to hang out at your office. I just, I just love your office. I know yeah. you have that refrigerator full of diet Coke, Yeah. but I actually did stop drinking diet Coke. But <laughs> I'm just sure there's water in there too, but I do appreciate a refrigerator full of diet Coke. Yeah. We should put diet Coke in our refrigerator too. Yeah. We just um, make guys make a note that yeah. it comes down to the, to, so, to the, but no, I'll be over there soon enough. Yeah. Um, now, so, so tell us about uh, Treehouse. You, you guys, I know like there's five or about five labs that are the best in Arizona, mm-hmm. and you guys are always on everybody's list. What is it that makes for a good lab? Why is it that everybody likes Treehouse? Was it because Glenn did such a good job running around like the funny English guy? I mean, how did – tell us about the history of Treehouse and yeah. – I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, I think, um, you know, the technologies that we're using, everybody uses the same type of machines. Um, but I think it's how we support our clients. You know, we want to be, it's a partnership. And we're trying to take the clinical version out of it, right? And the stigmatism of, the negative stigmatism of testing. Everybody's got to do it. We know they have to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And they can do it at any lab. So, you know, what Treehouse wants to do, and what we're going to continue to do, is you know give you a timely, re- accurate results, and then we want to be more of a partnership with our uh, with our clients and our memberships um, to really work with them to see what we can change for the results, right? Because all the, all the all we do is show them results of what they've done, what they've used in, you know, in the grow, what they've used, how they've cured the process, how they prepared, right. you know, everything from seed to to sale. And, and work closely with them to help them reach their full potential. I feel like I'm a giant chat GPT machine here learning. I'm like technology yeah. support, clinical, timely, accurate partnerships. I'm You're like, writing away over there. I'm like learning here. Now I'm going to create like a paragraph or something. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's our main focus. Kind of you know, weird little thoughts that kind of set me off. The, no, but you guys you guys are known as as like a very wonderful, uh, you know, this, the people like you. Which is good. It's just, so. it, it, oh, shit. No disrespect, <laughs> but it's just a lab. Like it's exactly. just a retail store, right? Or it's just a, you know. I mean, usually the, you know, the the real sexy fun things are kind of reserved for like the consumer touching brands kind right. of like thing, right? You know, the really close to consumers where they fall in love with their brand. Mm-hmm. But people like Treehouse, which they is do. good because it means you guys are branding into like a name that you know people in the industry at least mm-hmm. the ones that deal with you more feel good about. Yeah. And to feel good about a lab is kind mm-hmm. of like a, you know, that's, that's a badge of honor. It, it feels great. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. I don't like, I, what's the lab that I get tested my blood all the time in? Um, shoot. What's it? Sonoran. Sonoran. Yeah. Sonoran. Yeah. I go to Sonoran lab. I never think twice about it, you know, but Treehouse, you know, people yeah. can say, yeah, well, I'm going to go visit the guys at Treehouse. Yeah. So anyway, so you guys are doing a good job there. We are. And it's uh, it, it's a test to obviously Glenn, you know, he's very personable and, British bubbly and funny, but you also got to take your hat off to, uh, my, um, my client director, Abby's done a really good job of, uh, of building relationships. Right. And uh, that's what we want to make sure it's, it's a relationship business. Yeah. Right? We want to get away from it just being a business transaction and that we definitely care specifically with our clients, but we just work really great to bring, you know, the high quality medical grade cannabis to, to the patients specific, uh, in general, uh, no, Specifically, but in general, anybody who's consuming cannabis in this in this market. So who now? And, and this is something that I don't understand because I'm not working in the lab. Uh, mm-hmm. How many patients or consumers get their stuff tested on their own? Because they can, right? I'm glad you asked that. They can get it tested, you know, home growers and stuff. Or if they have a concern about a product they bought, well, hopefully they don't because you know all those products they purchased from a dispensary, you know, all have come with a COA. Right. Uh, the labs. If someone doesn't know what COA means, it's, uh, yeah. Um, but we are actually running a program right now to the first 50 home growers that come into our facility. We will do a free potency and terpene test. So it's a good thing. You know, everybody thinks they grow the fireweed at home, but, you, right. know, you know, the data is what really says so. You know, so you can get your own stuff tested, right? Get your own stuff tested, you know, just for bragging rights. Or it's good for a resume for a cultivator. 
you know, hey, you know, I have a home grow. Okay, everybody does. Okay, well, yeah, but mine tested at this. The terpene profile was this, you know, and that can really help them with, uh, you know, you know, building their resume and having that information to help them be successful in the industry because it's it's gonna it's ever growing and a lot of more people are trying to get into it. So it's how you prepare and uh, and how you learn quickly is really going to gauge your success. And if someone likes you, because it's a very close community, you can easily in Arizona be tagged as an asshole. Or someone who is collaborative and uh, and and wants to have fun and, and just be part part of this ever ever growing uh, cannabis community in Arizona. Yeah, sometimes I want to self tag myself as an asshole so people leave me alone. <laughs> Everybody always calls me and asks for things. So I need help with this. I need help with this. A lot of it, most of it, is actually people with job related, employment related stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, people looking for jobs, people shifting jobs, people having problems with their employers. Mm-hmm. You know, I do a lot of do a lot of random stuff, but anyways, that's not important. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Maybe for saying, um, <laughs> so, but I want to talk about testing in general because uh-huh. I remember a time when there wasn't any testing, and mm-hmm. I remember testing came in, and there was a lot of controversy as do we even need testing at all? What's the benefit? You have all these OGs who are like, come on, right? You know, I've been smoking since the '60s. You mm-hmm. know, I don't testing, schmesting. But why, now I understand. Mm-hmm product safety. I understand, but maybe you can help the people out there understand a little bit more why it is important to stick with tested traditional tax and regulate market cannabis. It's a great question. Um, it's a, it's a bar and a measure to hold, uh, the companies, you know, accountable for one thing, you know? Um, but what's to, for me, what's most important is as you, as you know, you know, being an advocate for 30 years, you know, most of the stuff wasn't tested. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that it's getting more involved, you know, just general consumers, but more importantly, the medical side, right? Certain things that people could use that can harm people in, in the black market right now, because they're just looking for yield or, you know, whatever that's that, 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 um, profile on that cannabis they're trying to, to, to get to, but I like to know what's in it. Right. I mean, I, I, I try to take health. I take health seriously. So I'm, I read ingredients all the time. That doesn't mean I don't have my uh, trash panda moments, but uh, I want to know what I'm consuming and being able to test that for one, help the, the grows know what they're doing, but know the, make sure the consumer knows what they're consuming is so important these days. Uh, you know, the, the different levels that we test, you know, we test for pesticides, we test for microbials, we test for heavy metals. Um, we test for residual solvents, you know, obviously potency and terpenes are, very, are probably the most popular for most consumers, but you know, there's a small group that's growing of consumers that want to know everything that's in that, that product, you know, regardless of how they can, how they ingest, if it's, you know, flour or concentrate or, or edibles or tincture, however that is, they want to make sure that they're ingesting something that's safe. And I want to make sure they are too. And so does everybody in the cannabis industry. So it's, uh, it's not the uh, most glorified part of the industry, but I tell you what, it definitely helps uh, everybody else glorify with the things they want to and also, you know, make sure it's safe. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, I was going to ask a question. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask one question, but I, I want to dial that back. I want to ask a tougher question. Uh-oh. What is going to happen? And uh, there's no answer, easy answer for this, but uh-huh. I'm going to ask you because you, you do have to lead the organization. Mm-hmm. It's going to go federally legal. Right everybody's going to be having different testing in all the different states because mm-hmm. no two states testing are identical. Right. And then the feds are going to come up with something. What do you, what do you see happening there? Oh, wow. You wow. know what I'm saying? What, like what, what, what's nobody knows what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and it no just, one does. I, I think about federal legalization a lot. Me too. That, that's kind of why I asked this. Um, and, and I think that, and this is a heads up for anybody out there. I think that a lot of people are going to play games mm-hmm. at the state level to try to control markets Yep. based on testing and it's going to put you guys in the middle of a fight right you know because you guys aren't going to play games you just say this is the best testing this one needs to be tested this is what we want to do this is science medicine mm-hmm. da, da, da. these are the laws of the state of arizona right but then there's all the laws in all the different other states and there's gonna be like no no no, we can't let in this product from those states because it's not tested properly and right it's, yeah it's just going to become a mess you, you i mean do you, do you whiteboard that stuff what? yeah 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 a lot of people have to, we have to white wall that shit yeah. you know it's gonna it be a, it's gonna be a big wall all right so yeah i mean federal legalization you know it's gonna happen at some point you know some people don't want it some people want it i'm kind of now that I'm on a different side of the industry, you know, my, I would say my opinions change a little bit yeah. just, yeah, because if it goes federally legal, there's going to have to be some federal standards, mm-hmm. right. Which everybody's going to have to follow. 
Um, it just depends on if they're going to let the legislation decide what locally, you know, because for instance, you know, the batch sizes are different here than they are in other states right. or, or what they require to, to test, you know. Um, the great thing is that everybody does require the testing. That's, that's probably the biggest hurdle that we've seen, but it's going to have to get dialed in, you know, are they going to let, you know, again, I think they'll just have a, a standard for, uh, for federal and then probably let some of the states kind of control in their markets uh, what, what they can and can't do. That goes back to your point of, yeah, if, you know, th- comes back, labs are great here in Arizona, but they go to, you know, they go to Idaho and those are different. You know, either we test for more things or less. So, you know, they're going to have to retest it when it goes across state lines, which is a cost and, and time um, and can change those tests because they could be longer before they get there. Just, you know, tests are different, you know, within a threshold between labs. And you know, the, no, I'm, I'm with you yeah. on that. I just had a really good idea. Yeah. The Arizona Lab Association, if there still is one, mm-hmm. or Arizona Labs in general, they should get together and push anyone who's legalizing at the federal level. Mm-hmm. Hey, remember, when you do testing standards, Arizona has it perfect, <laughs> and you should use ours, and then yeah. everybody else should move up or down or change or shift yeah. and make your business easier, make, yeah. put Arizona at the forefront. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, and then what's the – yeah, I mean, that's a great idea. I mean – Come up know, with weird ideas. Know, nudge some people. Um But uh, I think a lot of times what happens and when states first become any level of legalization, whether whether it be medical or or, or, uh, recreational, I think after that happens, none of that infrastructure was already set up to uh, uh, to move forward because they're like, you don't know if it's been a um, uh, um, how fast it goes to market. Right. So they kind of just follow some of the other States. Okay. This is what this state does. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. And maybe we'll change a couple of things. So it's separate, but a lot of times it seems like a lot of the States are, are already on the same page on a lot of procedures. Right. There's just a few, I think it's going to need to get tweaked and kind of agreed upon, especially if it's national and also makes it easier when, you know, it's going to be able to, you know, uh, legally cross state lines. Well, this is going to be, I mean, a big part of you guys is business development. A big part of you guys is, future as you move to other states and as you get involved with the states and mm-hmm. federal legalization happens and you know, can you test product out of Maine? You know, I always advise also the testing guys, make sure that you can, before there's even the interstate commerce for, for, uh, for sellable to consumer flour mm-hmm. or, or manufactured goods to make sure that you can ship testing across state line. Yeah. So you can start doing business across state lines, but that's that's just neither here nor there. I come up with a lot of weird stuff because <laughs> I existed like in the regulatory world mm-hmm. before there was laws. Right. So to me, nothing is sacred. To me, it's like why don't we give Adam an orange or a pear, and then somebody says apple, and then suddenly you end up with an apple in the Garden of Eden story. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. It could have yeah. been an orange. It could have been an apple. Right. I mean, it could have been a pear. It could yeah. be anything. It could be a banana next time. Shit, could have been so a bottle of weed. I, shit. I, it <laughs> probably was. I think the outcome would have been a little different, though. Right? Yes. No, they, some people say the apple was mushroom. Especially if it was tested, right? Yes. You, you, oh. know, it's, you know it's not poison. Well, but here's the, the, what just brings up an important thing. Mm-hmm. Testing, psilocybin. Mm-hmm. That's oh, wow. the next thing. That is. Everybody's yeah. going to want to have their psilocybin tested. You, Absolutely. You guys testing psilocybin? Can you legally? Um, legally, no, we are not testing. We are writing some standards to be able yes. to do that. Yes. They're currently doing a lot of, uh, hospitals are just doing a lot of trial testing. You know, uh, trials, you know, with proven out with customers and, and running tests and stuff. But, yeah, they're going to need to, at some point, be able to get that tested. And Another Just state. like cannabis. Yeah. If we, look, if we, if you want to help, I'll help you at the legislature. Yeah. That would give me a reason to go back. Yeah. Although I might have other reasons that I might go back. <laughs> um, I've been out of it for about two years. Yeah. The legislative stuff. Mm. Uh, peaceful coexistence. Um, but, uh, but getting some laws in there that allow our cannabis labs to test the, whatever the legal psilocybin market ends mm-hmm. up being. Yeah. Um, and then probably happen the same way where the States can do what they want to, like Colorado has what's going on right now. Yep. Um, and different other places of decrim and stuff, but mm-hmm. you know, we could actually help, uh, help you bring you guys some more business maybe that way. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, also with, uh, out. yeah. You know, loud here. Hey, we jamming. I'll come down every week. We sit here and brainstorm one and figure them, out some new stuff. Right. One of them is a lawyer back there saying no. Yeah, right. Cut it's like, like, like cut them off. But yeah, it, you know, uh, silly Simon's <laughs> a great point. Anything illegal? Yeah, job. right. And then also, uh, ketamine's a big one now. I see uh, a lot of ketamine uh, facilities and uh, labs are, are are starting up here in Arizona, and I've already seen at least one other lab that tests for ketamine. 
Right. So that's another avenue too. You know, it's like, there's just so many things. And then, um, there's a, net, I think there's a book. There's also a Netflix series called uh, change your mind. Right. Um, it just talks about how heavy the research and the testing was on all these psychedelics and then the stigmatism in the 60s came out and kind of, you know, the government put a little uh, fear into, 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 into the consumers and to the public to where, you know, that all came to a, a screeching halt. And not just in the United States, just in worldwide. Um, but it's great to see now that they are being more receptive to these avenues because these are some natural things, just like cannabis, that can have so many benefits to uh, to your health uh -huh. and so and so few uh, negatives as opposed to some of the the mainstream uh, processed uh, medicines out there to try to help people and I, and I tend to ask about these other things too because I've become such a, a, a herbal wellness naturopathic holistic kind of approach mm -hmm. guy since I realized that cannabis was like a, a plant that God put on this earth just to help people heal it's just a simple thing and mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that until after the just say no, Nancy Reagan uh, indoctrination that I received, but that's gone now. Yep. Uh, and but it's expanding, you know. And so the universe is like expanding more, but not so important. But we do got to wrap it up here. Yep. Um, you know, you're a very interesting guy. You got a lot of cool stuff going on. Oh, thanks. Um, you're definitely gonna be at the forefront of this industry and perhaps others um, as time goes on. And people can come and chat with you at, at Mita. Absolutely. So you know, hopefully people watch us and say, hey, you know, I saw you on the phone, that's the show. And, yeah. Come talk to you about this or that and about the great Arizona Wildcat victory over Nebraska. Um, that is, is true. Like, like, you know, probably one third of the people around here are Wildcats. Uh, it's okay. Uh, but, but, uh, but any, what kind of closing thoughts, you know, uh, do you have anything about yourself, Treehouse, yeah. the future? Yeah. I mean, the future looks or bright. Nebraska. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess the future looks bright in very many ways, uh, especially for the cannabis industry in Arizona. It's growing rapidly exponentially especially recently and it's going to continue to grow so i'm really excited about that um as far as the nebraska huskers they got a new coach this year so really excited hopefully we can get back to uh i mean right now i'm just i'll be happy with a winning season um and then lastly um you talked about Mita, and obviously this is Mita. So uh, this month on the 31st uh, is the uh, May uh, Mita event down at uh, the Sonder Monarch in Scottsdale. Um, Treehouse Labs will be uh, sponsoring the uh, VIP, and uh, that'll be at the pool. So we're having a pool party. Um, yeah, so it'll, so be, it'll be a good time. Everybody's invited, so please come down and check us out. Um, we'll be having a DJ. We'll have food. We'll have drinks. Uh, we'll and have I, pool games. So I think, yeah, bring swimming suits. Bring, it's gonna be 100 degrees. It's yeah, it's gonna get hot, and it's probably it's only get hotter until August. So uh, bring your bring your swim trunks if you don't want to wear them as you're doing your networking first. You know, there's a few different safe places to change into your uh, to your swimwear, and uh, we'll get you out there and uh, and have some fun and uh, meet the team. Uh, my whole team will be there. Actually, my wife will be there too. So I'm excited to get her more involved. And uh, but yeah. This, I'm just, this, I'm, this will definitely, I have no idea how this is going to go down. So, folks, maybe yeah, we'll see you there. It, it could be scary. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting. Yes, it well, will we be. We appreciate your time. And yeah. I look forward to, to following your journey as you, you know, proceed through the cannabis industry. And, and Treehouse is a wonderful organization. Thank it's you. It's great that you're leading them now. Thank you. Uh, maybe Glenn's still leader. You're the second in command. I don't know. Yeah. But both you guys are great people. So we look forward to doing anything that we can do to support you. Absolutely. And uh, let me know. Reach out anytime. Yeah, absolutely. We, do, we want to do the same. You know, we're supportive in the whole uh, community. So whatever we can do to help, we can we can uh, provide. Okay. What? All right. Oh, Treehouse, we are located uh, in Scottsdale. Google it, Eric. Um, yeah, you can Google it. Or our website is thlabs.com. Uh, we'll have all our information on there. And then please remember, you guys, you home growers, let's uh, get you down to the lab and uh, and get your product tested so you can have some muscle when you go when you go out there and uh, stick your chest out. Be proud of what you did, not just the way it looks and smells and tastes, but, you know, the science behind it and how it looks. I love that concept, and we definitely need to get word about that out there as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you.